Hey everybody, I'm Robert Donovan. Welcome to this episode of Not Treconomics. This is part three of three in my take on how I do a Star Wars style hyperspace jump effect. This is the effect we're going to be achieving. In part one, we made the streaky stars. In part two, we made the hyperspace tunnel and the emergence therefrom. And in this one, we are going to show you how to put them together into a finish clip like the one you're seeing here. So we will kill this, we will minimize that, because that's why I'm recording the screen, and open up a new scene in Blender. We're going to go straight into the video sequence editor here. Going to click Use Backdrop, and now when we import the clips, you will see when the playhead goes over, they will play in the background. So the first thing we want to do is uh, import the clips. By the way, you can use any nonlinear video sequence editor for this. Uh, Blender is not actually really meant as a video sequence or a video editor, but it does do the job here and it's nice to just keep everything in the same software. If you were actually doing this, you could render the two clips and as soon as you were done, you could go right into the video sequence editor and import them. The way you import them, you go down here and click add and if you, now as I said before, you can render these things either directly to MP4 or to a uh, sequence of stills. I prefer to use stills because you can stop when in the middle and pick up where you left off, but I'm going to show you how to do this both ways. If you rendered them as PNG or other still images, you click add and then click image, and you'll notice there's a little pop-up says add an image or image sequence to the sequencer, which kind of tells you what you got to do. So let's go ahead here and I'm going to go into the stills folder where I have the uh, the the streaky stars and to do that if if the folder contains nothing but the stills for the clip you want to import just hit the A key and that'll select them all and then click add image strip and here you see we have our initial stars this is from an earlier version of this that I did so it may not look exactly the same as the one you saw at the beginning of the video but the idea here is to show you how to put the clips together not to render an exact replica of what we did in the tutorials so as we press play, you see that we go through here and we've got our streaky stars effect happening. And it'll just go to the end and swing back. And it won't stop here because I'm going to, I haven't set the end frame yet, but let's go back to the beginning. And now if you're importing an MP4, you click add movie. And I will go to the tutorial files here and that will be clip two on my system here. And we'll click Add Movie Clip, and you'll notice that it puts the track on its, it puts the clip on a separate track, and it starts where the playhead is. And since I put it back to the beginning, they're both starting at zero. And notice that the track on top is the one that takes precedence. That's the one that you're going to see. So let's uh, right click, and if you uh, hold the right mouse button down and drag the uh, clip like this, you can move it out here. Now the next step, let's left click to drop that. The, the next step is to figure out where you want the transition to start. So as I, as you'll recall, I have a bunch of, uh, the, the, I have a bunch of frames that are a little extra. And you'll see here, this is the last frame where the particles are in the streaky stars are flying past the camera. And this is where we want to enter the hyperspace tunnel. So we're going to go, let's see, this is the last one. Okay, so we want to go about five frames back or... Yeah, something like right to the point here where you see the particles start to get, they almost overtake the camera. A couple of frames right before that is where you want the transition to start. So we'll take it to right about there. And then I will uh, right click and move the second track so that it snaps to that, that frame. And so now we're like, we're sitting here that where the second strip starts right where the transition begins. And uh, with the second strip selected, hit the N key. And over here, you'll see a value for opacity. And at that point, we don't want the second strip to be visible, the second clip. So we're going to take the opacity all the way down to zero. And now you'll see that the clip underneath it comes through because we've basically made the top clip transparent. And what we're going to do with our holder mouse cursor over this, hit I to keyframe that. And then we're going to go and go frame by frame until we get to the point where, there we go, right there, that last frame. We want to uh, 
that's the frame where we want to be fully opaque on that second strip. So we're going to take the opacity, this in my case is frame 93, we're going to take it all the way up to 1 for the opacity and then hit the I key again to keyframe that. And so now what we have, if we go back and press play from the beginning, you'll see that we have the streaky stars effect happening here and it continues. And it's a little slow because we're rendering as we go, but now it just fades right into that streaky star, the streaky stars fades right into the, the second clip and we'll see that again here. Right as it gets there, it's coming in and it just fades right into it as you go through. So it looks like you're flying through the portal into the hyperspace and then coming back out again. So the last thing we want to do to tidy this up before we render it is we want to figure out where our end frame has to be. And that's going to be at the very end of this. We'll just do this frame by frame until we get to where we need to be. There we go. We'll go to 192. You could go one before that if you want to. I wouldn't think any less of you, but I'm just going to go with 192. And then I'm going to hit the home key to make this fit the uh, window. And I'm going to set 192 as our end frame value for the animation. And I'm going to hit the home key to make this thing match. And we'll hit the home key again to make this thing match. That We've got the end frames matched up. And all we have to do now is go back to the beginning. And if we come over here to the render tab, make sure you have your output set someplace other than temp. I just set mine to the uh, stills folder here. And I'm not going to do it again because I've already done it. But that's you just pick an output. I'm just We'll just pick that output. What the heck? And that way you're not rendering to temp. You can render to temp, but it's just it's a bad place because it, it's... Other things are there, and if, if you turn the computer off, it will be erased upon exit. So you will lose all your work if you happen to forget that. So that is how we will do this here. We've got it now going to stills, and then all you have to do is up here on the render tab, click the animation button, and it will render that whole thing out. And we want to render this thing not as PNGs. We want to go to FFmpeg video. And then down here you'll see encoding, and Blender can render to everything. You know, can Flash, Matroska, all, uh, MP4, AVI, all these video formats Blender can render to. And I'm just going to pick MP4 because that's the one that YouTube likes. All the rest of this can stay at the default. And then you just go back up here to the top and click the animation button. And you'll see it happens very quickly because it doesn't have to render 3D. It just has to render 2D images and it'll go through in you know a couple of minutes here a few seconds per uh, less than a second per frame so we're or, well a few seconds per frame and so we're almost uh, better than halfway through here and we're about halfway through there we go we're at the the uh, tunnel here and we're three quarters of the way done here roughly speaking. And we're coming up on the exiting the hyperspace. Bang, there we go. And there you have it, folks. Now there are a couple of caveats. You'll notice that I mixed a series of image sequences, still frames, with an MP4. And if you go to the, the folder where that went, And I put it in the stills. And now if you render this, this is the clip we just made. And you'll notice that it renders just fine. There's no Blender has no problem mixing still images with video files, but you have to match the frame rate. And that's why when we did these, the first thing I did when we did this, if you'll recall in parts one and two, was I set my render settings and I set my frame rate so that they would both be the same. And I also made a point of being very precise about where I positioned everything so that when you do the transition, the center of the hyperspace tunnel is in the same place as the center of the streaky stars coming towards you. Now, if that should, if it should happen that you mess that up and you get that a little off, there is a way to fix that, and I will show you that now. Let's run back to the beginning here and go to the video sequence editor. And if you go down here and uh, you will see there's a, 
um, a setting here called image offset and or I'm sorry uh, and you can you can click the image offset and actually move the center of the image as it is displayed and adjust the time so if you need to do that you can play with these x and y values to get the centers in the right place so that everything transitions properly and looks right when it does so that is how uh, you do this folks. It's a very very simple thing to do particularly in the blender video sequence editor again You don't have to use the blender video editor to do it. You can use any video editor I normally do Caden use Caden live because it can unlike blender blender cannot interpolate different frame rates Which is why you have to match the frame rate uh, video editors like Caden Live in the Linux side and After Effects and Sony Vegas and Sony Premiere, they can do that too. So you could just import all of this into those and achieve the exact same result. But if you got Blender open already and you've just rendered the thing, you can just pop it right into the video sequence editor and it does the job just fine. So I hope you found this interesting and useful for our next video. I'm not sure what date it's coming out, but it'll be in the next uh, few weeks. I'm going to then move on to the Star Trek warp bubble effect. And as an extra bonus, I uh, was on Kyle Hill's Nerdist channel, and he did an interesting talk about what a real hyperspace jump or real warp jump would actually look like. And I decided, you know, I looked around YouTube and I haven't seen anybody doing an actual physically accurate hyperspace jump in Blender. So I, like Han Solo, am going to shoot first. And we're going to do that after I do the, the uh, Star Trek Warp Bubble video. And then we'll move on to the uh, social media integration and building a sane tax system as promised in uh, the late part of last year. So once again, thanks a lot for watching. Hope everybody found this useful. And may the balance of your day be awesome.